you and I have a mandate. Let's talk about your mandate every Thursday on the program, The Mandate, brought to you by ZT Communications in partnership with the Taraba State Broadcasting Service, TSBS Jalingo. For sponsorship and advert placement, please call 0803-454-0469. The Mandate, a part to good governance. Hello, welcome to another edition of the program, The Mandate. The Mandate is a platform where we bring chief executives and heads of the departments, power starters and government to tell us what their mandate is and how that mandate benefits the citizenry. Today, join me as I welcome on The Mandate, the executive chairman of Bukhari Local Government Area of Taraba State. Honorable Dr. Adi Daniel Adi Grace, you're welcome on the mandate. Thank you. Okay, the Honorable Chairman will be telling us what his mandate is and how it benefits the people generally. But that will be after this short time out. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> You and I have a mandate. Let's talk about your mandate every Thursday on the program, The Mandate, brought to you by ZT Communications in partnership with the Taraba State Broadcasting Service, TSBS Jalingo. For sponsorship and advert placement, please call 0803-454-0469. The Mandate, a part to good governance. Welcome back. It's still the mandate here on TSPS as well as on our online platform www.ztonline.com. And recall, we said the mandate is a platform where chief executives tell us what their mandate is and how that mandate benefits the citizenry. Chairman, you're welcome on the program once more. Thank you. So, can you tell us what your mandate is as the chairman of Ugari Local Government Area? Well, just like you said, I have a mandate which is a tax given to me by God and by the authority of the states. Uh, the mandate given unto me by the state is to make sure I self-guide whosoever under my jurisdiction, self-guide them, accord peace to them, protect their life, and at the same time also protect their property. Because that is the number one mandate which is given unto me. Because when I protect their life, protect their property, and then give them peace. By the time I call peace to them, I have given them the tickets, the freedom to struggle for their survival. Because when you don't have peace, you can't do anything meaningful. Sure. When you don't have peace, you can't even reason. When you don't have peace, you can't even pray to God to grant you audience for other things. So the number one mandate we talk about here is the peace. Then we'll think how development will take place. Yeah. We'll talk about this development. We have the physical development and at the same time we have the human development. See, when we talk about the physical development, these are the infrastructures that a common man needs to benefit from the government, to benefit from the society. We talk about the road network connection. As a man in a grassroots, they need it. Because when you connect a place with road, they have good road, you see, they are okay because that road will facilitate their movements. Even their farm products, they will bring it out very easily. But situation whereby they are not connected, you know, they will find it very difficult whatsoever good things they have within their domain to bring it out. It's a problem. How does this mandate of yours benefit the people? You have started pinpointing some of them already. Yes. The Wukari local government is predominantly a farming settlement, if, yes. I, if I'm right. Yeah. Okay, so how has your mandate been able to make create an enabling environment for these farmers, especially, or the citizens of Ukari to benefit? In the creation of Ukari local government, we have a challenge from Ukari to Tsukundi. Okay. 
Sukundi is a settlement where people dwell there and they are predominantly farmers. They produce huge amount of food, they produce rice, they produce sugarcane, they produce cassava, as well even yam. But see, they have a road network problem. But to the glory of God, a government that sympathizes with the people who are living in the village, who are finding it very difficult, that road is 29 kilometers. But I want to tell you that today, if you see the road, it's tight nylon. And that work is done by our Father, who is the architect of peace, loving. And to talk about the road network connection, in my own site, I have a particular road that since I was born, the road is being blocked. I'm a bonify in this thing of Okari. Both sides of mine is purely chicken. From my mother's side and my father's side. There's a particular road in Okari when I was giving birth. Up to this moment, the road was blocked. You understand? Mm. One cannot pass through that road because they blocked the road with houses. But when I came into power, the first project, no, the second project I embark on is to connect that road. And I make sure that the structure who blocked the access road is being removed. And I make sure that the road is connected now. People are passing through that road freely. You know, as a leader, it says charity begins at home. Sure. And as a leader, you have to show good example. Who is that person that blocked that road? It's not any other person, but my uncle. Oh, yeah, relation. my uncle. He yeah, brought my dad. But for me to set the ball rolling and to set good example, when I came into power, I said, no. This cannot continue. I have to connect that road. I have to make sure that the structure erased on the road. We have to clear the way so that we we'll give people access to move, to walk, to carry their goods to their houses. When that structure was erased, I make sure that I put grenades, put lacra on the road so that those people behind they will have access to move into their houses. So we're talking about the road network connection. It's not only that, to accord the mandate to my people, you know, you, you, you have to at least find a source of water for them, which is very, very paramount. Find a source of water for them, which is good for living. Our boss has given us the mandate. I remember last year he sank a lot of boreholes in Ukari. In Ukari. Yeah. He sank a lot of boreholes in Ukari so that people who live within they should have access to clean water to drink. I remember with this water, I, we allocate this water to various villages that we have within. We sank all this water to them. And they are very happy. In the villages? In the villages, they are very happy. I can take you around to see the work this man is doing. Just like son and the father. He is my father. He sang a lot of boho. And within my own capacity, from the little revenue I generate, I was also able to sank about four boho to the community. And they are benefiting from it today. And they are happy. Oh. You understand? Yeah. They are happy because they can have water to drink. And you see, another mandate here is the people in the community, what do they want? They want to be safe guides. Security. They want security. You understand? Mm. They want security. And I told you the man who is behind this piece who is piloting the affair of this peace. In the past, we have a lot of challenges within. In Bukhari, Yes. Government. But the man wants to accord peace to us. Now, if you go to Chunku, Chivdom, 
You can see he has built an army base there, a mobile base. Outpost is being built there for the security of our people. If you take Rafikada Road, we also built a place for the special force. They are there. And not only that, at the same time, also supply them with bike to enable them to move where they are in emergency. And not only that, if you go through Tugundi to Ukari, we also have this army there. We built all these places for them to ensure security. To ensure there is peace and they have security within them. How has your mandate been able to tackle this issue of unrest within the local government? Communal clashes, headers, farmers, and all of that. Is it this? What is what I'm saying? By when he set all this in place today, we have a relative peace now in Okari because all the security agencies they are within. If you want to do anything in the bush, they are there. If you want to do anything in the town, they are there. So they make sure that they enforce this law and order. Nobody is allowed to carry any weapon. Nobody is listening to it. The only people who are listening to it is the soldier, and the police, the immigration, the civil defense. These are people who are listening to weapon. So, whosoever that they discover that is carrying all this weapon, they apprehend such people and then bring them to all, bring them to book. And that is why you see now we can enjoy peace. Now you can see me relaxing now because there is peace. I have time for myself, I have time for my family, I have time to do this and to do that. Assuming if it was in the past, now that you are granting me this interview, you didn't have my time. I could be in the bush struggling to make sure that we are called peace. But with the, the arrival of this security deployed by the state government to the community, everybody has up. And that gives us joy in the society. You understand? Yeah. And then uh, you can see as as a mandate, yes, we have a mighty general hospital in the county, and that hospital has been there so lapidated. I remember during the time of Reverend Julie Yami, was a former governor, he just brought some mattress and then dumped them there. Even if they ask you to go to that hospital, even you go to that hospital, you find nobody, no staff, so lapidated. But a mandate who was given to the man who won this peace, when he came around, he looked at the hospital, he said, no, 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 no. The hospital is not worthy to be called a hospital. He restructured it. You know what these people can do? Architects. He redesigned everything about that hospital. He transformed it. If you look at the hospital now, you think whether you are in the U.S., of course, you can go there and see things for yourself. In, in the past, when you have fracture, they refer you to Nka, they refer you to Makodi, they refer you to Canon, and the rest of them. But today, I can break your hand now, and I can take you to the general hospital. No, I don't think so, Chairman. You don't think so? No, 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 no. I want us to practicalize it. <laughs> no, 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 Chairman. Of course, I want <laughs> us to practicalize it. Because you go there now, we, 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 we have the specialists wow. who they are there, taking care of people, a lot of consultants who are there. You understand? Yeah. I, I now, think all of this you're saying you attracted to Wukari local government is there through your mandate. Of course. Okay, but there are primary health care centers which are the responsibility of the local government, isn't it? Of course. So how are the state of the health? They are in order because we, 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 we collaborate with the health agency. You understand what I'm saying? We collaborate with the health agency. They have been helping us. And even up to the time we have this program, they call it, uh, is it BPF or so? 
You see, all this, our health facility, they kept them in order. You understand? Yes. Not like the way if women want to give birth to a baby, will be suffering. No. They're in good shape now. They're in good condition. And everybody is willing to go there. So like the issue of the general hospital, I'm saying, I'm not done. I still want to talk more okay. there. Okay. Because I want to give you more lights there. In the general hospital that I'm talking about, mm. if you go there today, you appreciate what this man has done there. And even up to now, they are still working in that general hospital. Equipping it. Equipping it. In fact, I want to assure you that the, the, the FNC in Jalingo, they don't have some of the facility we have here. Because some of the facility we have here, they brought them from our sites. And they are there. Because he, he made sure that he equipped everything in order. And then from the way you are talking, I'm becoming scared already. Don't. The, the cost of, you know, the poor masses enjoying this health benefit, is it affordable? It's affordable. Okay. Very, very affordable. Okay. Because he make it for, for the poor one. Mm. So when it's so expensive, who he can go there? It, sure. He is a general hospital, not private. It's a general. Mm. So it's affordable. Now, if you go to the general hospital, you see number of people day and night. The place is just like a market square mm. because people from near and far, they are coming. Now, that's the health sector we have also touched. Let's touch the, the issue of uh, employment for the team in youths. Right. I understand Bukhari has a lot of youths. Of course. And uh, sometimes if they are not um, gainfully employed, it could actually become negative um, impact. How is the employment uh, or engagement of youth in the country? That is where I want to come in now. Okay. You see, we have a father whenever we cry unto him, he listens to our cry. Which I want to assure you that he gave them employment. Almost about 300 and something youths, he gave them employment through what? Through his rescue mission. He employed them as teacher. They teach in school. You understand? Mm. About 300 and something, he employed them. Not only that, our noble youth, whom we have them within, he gave us mandates. We recruited almost about 100 and something who are there in Mashal. Tarabas said Mashal. Because he Tarabas said Mashal. He gave all the various local government mandates okay. to employ them. These youths, they are there, just like we are talking about the former head of clash. Yeah. This Masha is purely their responsibility. They live within all these villages. Okay. So when there are skirmishes between this farmer and the header, they are the one who quickly go there to intervene, to intervene okay. and solve the issue. You understand? Mm -hmm. And the youth, they are very happy in doing that. And that could tell a lot of things. And then, thank God, even just a recent now, they are talking about this community policing. You know, we engage this, our youth into it, and they are very, very happy. And you can see, I think, in Ukari, in Taraba State, we have more number of youths that are being given appointment in the administration of the government as advisor, special advisor, assistant, uh, uh, special assistant to the government. We have almost about 50 to 60 stakeholders in Okari local government who are youths into the government. So I think he is doing a noble one because the we in Okari we gave him a total vote of 92,500 and something who in the state known have done that and we did that is why he he has the mandate to concentrate what he is doing in Ukari. Hmm. and that benefits you makes your mandate easier of course all right as we're coasting to the end of the program we'll talk about agriculture you did mention that yes farming is yes. a major occupation yeah, yeah. here fact, what are you doing in fact your mandate now look at it in this agriculture way. look at it this way this man is a is a man who is sent by god to us because he gave us some ceiling 
He gave us rice. He gave us beans. He gave us cassava steel. So that we now give it to our people. Giving it to them so that to enable them to go into farming. And I told you just last week when I went to my rice farm, I sold my rice. I said, God. You are a farmer as well? Why would it I? Okay. I was born and brought up in farming. Don't mind all this school we go to. As a black man, we must have to maintain that other lens of farming. So, you know, he gave us all this to encourage us into this farming. But the raining and the dry season farming, he gave us it. And we share it to people. Now, they have started harvesting and bringing in their farm product home. And you can see the, the, the types of rice. He gave it to us, we gave it to our people. It's quite different with the one we normally farm here. And you see, even the cassava steam, the one he brought is more modernized one compared to the initial one we have. So, in terms of agri, in fact, even last month when he came, he told our people that he wants the, the, the chief don, the two chief don, who he has just ask them to settle down, calm down, give him that openness of peace. In fact, he helped them. He even gave them this mini tractor to go into farming. He gave them fertilizer so that when they farm, they can now apply it. He gave them cassava steel when they brought from Ibadan. He equally gave them beans and benicides so that they should go into farming. But if somebody who is not ready, for farming, you need to advising your people, producing all these things to them so that they could go into farming. So I think when we talk about the issue of farming, we will have a lot of things to say there because he is doing it. He sent it to us, then we we'll give it to the masses. They should go into this farming. Mm. Yeah. Well, when you talk about um, your mandate and how it aligns with the state government. Yes. Of course, I, it begins to sound more like all the attention of the Taraba state government is focused on developing Ukari local government. Not only Ukari. No, of course, mostly, like you said. Not mostly. After all you over. gave him the highest vote, yeah, of for course. What he just brought of course. That's a great one. But now, let's finally, in your last word, talk about Ukari local government area. You have been elected by the people to also give them good governance. What are you doing in Wukari local government here to ensure good governance for the people of Wukari local government as the chairman elected? See, I have said it earlier before now. It is my mandate to make sure that all looks and corner of Wukari is served. By saving it, which is very paramount, then all hands on decks to make sure that but the youth and the old one find something doing, which is very, very paramount for them. I told you before now, on our own parts, we cannot separate from our father, who is the governor. We cannot do anything that say this thing is purely we do it. You no. Know, like the father, like son. 24 hours, we are lawyer. 24 hours, we receive instruction from him. Whatsoever he said, that is what we do. So, you cannot separate us from our father because we receive instruction. We receive directly from him. And anything he asks us to do, we do it 100% correctly. Because that is where our loyalty goes. You see, whenever I'm talking, I lay emphasis that he will bring this to us and what we do we give it to the grassroots he would ask us to do this then we we'll do it to our people anything he wants to do he does that thing directly to us to the grassroots to the grassroots wow. because we are the channel of his communication we are the, the food soldier on ground mm -hmm. because he is there we we'll type from him and then we we'll give it to our people and any challenge here will reflect to him. We we'll say, Father, this is the challenge. You know, as a peacemaker, then he will sit down, he designed it, 
he now gets the model how to solve it. By the time he designed the model, he tells us that okay, apply this, apply this. This is the equation, and then this is the balance. Then we bring it home and work by it. And it has always worked. And the equation will balance. Wow, that's great. Okay, we have come to the end of the program. Your last word to the people of Okari as you continue. You have a long mandate, isn't it? Of Three course. more years to go. Now, what's your message to the people of Okari as you continue to uh, apply your mandate? Well, my to message them? to the good people of Okari local government, just like my boss always say, give me peace, I give you development. If you want to accord peace to somebody, you must be a law-abiding citizen. So, my appeal to every listener, not only really Ukari, but the good people of Ukari, I plead with every one of us, we should accord respect to the peace of the states. We should tolerate each other so that we can develop our local government, which is the greatest and the biggest local government in the states. So that we can attract the attention of government, should do more for us hmm. and we will be the beneficiary thank you very much the chairman of Okari local government honorable adi daniel adi grace for your time on the mandate and of course sharing with us how that mandate benefits the good people of Okari and tarabans generally you're welcome that's the much we'll take on the program today the mandate but do join us again for another enlightening package on the same channel Remember, you can watch the entire package online again if you log on our site, www.zteonline.com. I'm your sincerely Iwese Kunde Enoch, asking you to stay good and bye for now. You and I have a mandate. Let's talk about your mandate every Thursday on the program, The Mandate, brought to you by ZT Communications in partnership with the Taraba State Broadcasting Service, TSPS Jalingo. For sponsorship and advert placement, please call 0803-454-0469. The mandate, a part to good governance.